Similar triangles are triangles that are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. There are two tests for similar triangles. If two triangles have two angles that are the same, they are similar. This is called the AA rule. Alternatively, if two triangles have all sides that are in the same proportion, they are similar. This is called the SSS rule. In this example, each side of the large triangle is twice the corresponding side of the small triangle, so the triangles are similar. In this video we will prove these two rules. If you are not familiar with the AA and SSS rules, there is a video linked in the description below. For two triangles to be similar, two conditions must be true. Firstly, all three angles must be the same. In this case, this requires that A equals D, B equals E, and C equals F. Secondly, all the corresponding sides must be in the same proportions. So side A divided by side D must equal side B divided by side E, and side C divided by side F. The AA rule says that if the triangles have two angles the same, then the other angle must be the same, and all the sides must be proportionate. In other words, if these two equations are true, then all four equations are true. The SSS rule says that if all the sides are proportionate, then all the angles must be the same. In other words, if this equation is true, then all four equations are true. We will prove these rules in this video. We will look at the AA case first. These triangles have two angles the same. The two angles labelled A are equal. The two angles labelled B are equal. We will start by proving that the third angle is the same, so C equals E. This is quite easy. The angles in a triangle add up to 180. So from the small triangle, C equals 180 minus A plus B. And from the large triangle, E equals 180 minus A plus B. So E equals C. Now we know that all the angles are the same, we need to prove that all the sides are proportionate. We need to prove that side A divided by side D equals side B divided by side E equals side C divided by side F. We will use the sign rule to prove this. If you are not familiar with the sign rule, there is a video link in the description. The sign rule tells us that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Since the two triangles have the same angles, and we are looking for a proof involving ratios, this looks like a promising place to start. Taking just the A and B parts of the sine rule, A over sine A equals B over sine B. This can be rearranged as A over B equals sine A over sine B. Now let's look at the big triangle. Sides D and E are equivalent to sides A and B in the small triangle. The sine rule tells us that D over sine A equals E over sine B, which this time gives us D over E equals sine A over sine B. Combining these tells us that A over B equals D over E. Now let's multiply both sides by B over D. Cancelling terms gives us A over D equals B over E. This is the first part of the required proof. Now we can do exactly the same thing with angles A and C and sides A, C, D and F. We won't go through it all again, but the end result is that A over D equals C over F. Combining these two equations gives us side A divided by side D equals side B divided by side E equals side C divided by side F, which is exactly what we set out to prove. We 
We will now prove the second rule, the SSS rule. In these two triangles, the smaller triangle has sides A, B, C. The larger triangle has sides S times A, S times B, and S times C, where S is the scale factor between the two triangles. For example, if the larger triangle is twice as big as the smaller triangle, S will be 2. The sides are all in the same proportion, we need to prove that the angles are equal. We will use the cosine rule for this. Here's the equation of the cosine rule for the small triangle. This equation tells us the cosine of angle A. For the large triangle, angle D is the equivalent of angle A. We can calculate this angle using the cosine rule by substituting SA for A, SB for B, and SC for C. Then we can separate out the terms in S. Every term, top and bottom, has a factor of S squared, so let's cancel these out. This is the same equation we had for cosine A, so cosine D equals cosine A. This means that angle D equals angle A. We have to be a bit careful with this statement, but we will assume it's true for now. We'll get back to that in a minute. We can use the same steps to prove that angle B equals angle E, and angle C equals angle F. This proves that all the corresponding angles of the two triangles are equal, which proves the SSS rule. So we have just proved that cosine D equals cosine A. Does this mean that the angles are definitely equal? Not quite, because the inverse cosine is not unique. For example, the cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5, but the cosine of 120 degrees is also 0.5. So if we try to find the inverse cosine of 0.5, the answer could be 60 or 120. In fact, for any angle P, the cosine of P is equal to the cosine of 180 minus P. So in the two triangles shown here, angles A and D have the same cosine, but they are obviously different because A is acute and D is obtuse. In fact, this isn't too much of a problem for our proof, because the values of the three sides determine whether the angle is acute or obtuse. For a right angle triangle, the sides obey the Pythagoras equation, x squared equals y squared plus z squared, where x is the side opposite the right angle, in other words, x to the hypotenuse. For the acute triangle on the left, a squared is less than b squared plus c squared. For the obtuse triangle, d squared is greater than e squared plus f squared. In the case of the SSS rule, we already know that A, B and C are in the same proportions as D, E and F. So the first triangle could be acute, right-handled or obtuse, but the second triangle must also be the same. So it is valid in this case to say that if the cosines are equal, then the angles must be equal. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.